Now, Ahsoka episodes one through three are officially out on Disney Plus, and so far, guys, I have been very clear and open with you all over the past couple of days. I've been very uninterested, not so impressed, and just flat out very bored about all the episodes that debuted so far about Star Wars Ahsoka by Dave Filoni and some of the handful of directors out there that have worked on this show. Now, given that, you know, there are a handful of mixed reviews out there, and a lot of which are building up, as we move along throughout this season. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. And let's get right into the subject, shall we? Now, look, I am very open to everyone having their own opinion. That's all welcome here, by the way, below in the comments. If you like Ahsoka, look, that's great for you. I'm proud of you guys, but I, for however, am not supporting the show so far. As far as episode three goes, every single scene, every single episode has been very predictable because I'm finding that every sequence is a literal direct copy of either the sequel trilogy moments or original trilogy moments. And quite literally. It's not like it's a parallel or anything like that or an inspired scene. There are literal copy and paste sequences where you can literally say this is about to happen and it does in Ahsoka. So we're going to get into exactly what Kathleen Kennedy had to say about the supposed backlash of Ahsoka, the growing number of critics out there, and what to expect further down the road by Dave Filoni and his Star Wars movie and how it connects to Ahsoka. So this is where Kathleen Kennedy, I feel, really kind of loses her mind and her overall view on how Star Wars works. Now, given that Disney and Lucasfilm are still struggling with the Ahsoka Tano series, Kathleen Kennedy eventually was able to address the Ahsoka series by delivering the following to everyone. I think our biggest challenge is that many are led to believe that Star Wars is only made for boys or men, and that is something that we needed to change with both Ahsoka and the Acolyte. We have noticed a growing number of, of individuals that don't approve of this installment just because it lacks male characters, and we view that simply as shallow. I have been more than proud to work with Dave Filoni, and Dave was proud to take concepts from creators like J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, two very talented creators that have helped rework our retelling of the Thrawn trilogy books by Timothy Zahn. We knew going in that we couldn't just retell those tales that featured Luke, we had to do something different, and Dave agreed with me on that fully. Even Dave wanted to reinvent the heir to the Empire story that's going to lead into his new Star Wars movie that we have new announcements on the horizon. I spoke with Dave directly about how we would expect a handful of these loyal fans to George that would actually reject these ideas going in that would be unhappy. And I think one of Dave's most inspiring replies he gave to me was that Star Wars is all about adapting and evolving and doing something new. Now guys, let me pause here for one second before I get to the next big bit about what Kathleen Kennedy has to say about the growing number of critics for Star Wars Ahsoka and what to expect for the future. Now, here's the problem that I have with Ahsoka, all right? And she's literally admitting that Dave was inspired by J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson. Now, I think that's exactly why you have a map to Thrawn and a map to Skywalker and how that's presented in the first two episodes of the Ahsoka series. Let's not forget about how, you know, Ryan Johnson, you had Leia in space, also known as Leia Poppins. And then in episode three, we magically have Ahsoka in a spacesuit, flying in midair, taking out starships, which I thought was really ridiculous. And quite frankly, I laughed when she put on that spacesuit and how it conformed to her montrails. I don't know why. But something about it just looked very cheesy and hilarious to me. Now, look, I'm not trying to deliberately be very, you know, um, pessimistic about this show. I can only say how I feel. And what I feel is what I feel. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat anything or hold anything back. If you guys like Ahsoka, that's perfectly fine and okay. But from what it sounds like, Dave Filoni has either put on a front for the past couple of years about respecting the Lucas lore or or Kathleen Kennedy corrupted him. 
and I don't believe at this point in time that it's the latter. I think that there was something about Dave that was hidden for a long time. There was a lot of interviews back in 2016 where he was talking about how he loves the concept of how Rey just magically finds her force powers and takes down Kylo Ren and how he's all for that. He is a Rey supporter, he is a Rey lover of the whole Rey Skywalker concept as well. This was later unveiled. But let's get into this further because this is where it becomes more unveiling by Kathleen Kennedy and what she has to say about Star Wars Ahsoka. This is where it gets quite worrisome. If you are any kind of fan out there that's holding on to hope about Dave Filoni's movie. Let's get into this. Now, she says he was aware, she's talking about Dave, he was aware that Lucas Loyals would reject this new direction that we were going in for Ahsoka, and he took the risk to move forward and tune it out of any naysayers for this series, because this series will lead into his movie, which is very important. Dave had direct conversations with JJ and Ryan on using some of their concepts to transform the Thrawn trilogy. We try to ignore any fans that are loud and opinionated. They need to understand you can't just adapt a copy and paste story of the books that were put out in the 90s, because then Star Wars would be too predictable for the thrills and the story to unfold. Well, I, have, I got a little bit of, you know, something to say to Kathleen Kennedy, and one thing about that is that there are many prime examples of adapting movies from books or adapting you know stories from books to movies lord of the rings and harry potter you know the most notable franchises out there i don't see why star wars is you know uh one to exclude that concept where you can't just go back to books and retell it beat for beat this i think would have made the ahsoka series or dave filoni's movie a whole lot more attractive if Luke was at the center of it all, if they found a way to insert Han and Leia, and look, they could have also created a balance by inserting Ahsoka into the story if they wanted to. They could have at least made it closer or more accurate to the original Thrawn trilogy books. So what Kennedy is saying here is that these Thrawn books and stories that are being retold by Dave were inspired by J.J. Abrams, were inspired by Ryan Johnson, inspired by the sequel trilogy movies. That's a lot of uh, inspired that I said there. But moving on, we know that John and Dave have worked on Mando seasons one through three, seasons one through two, by the way, for me, were peak Star Wars after, of course, technically the sequel trilogy. And I think at the end of the day right now, this just goes to show you that Dave Filoni's movie may very well already be corrupted because it's going to be taking prime examples from people like J.J. and Ryan. And Kathleen Kennedy, I think, is losing her mind here about the growing number of critics, about how it's just a handful of people that are loud and opinionated that do not want female leads. I can't stress this enough, and I know I say this way too many times, but I have to make it clear. I'm a supporter of female leads. Even if it's an all-female-led cast, that's fine. But if it's a forced agenda... That's when you lack story, that's when you lack character development, and it just flat out does not work. And I think that's exactly why we're getting yet another bait and switch scenario of Ahsoka. This is literally the Sabine show. Have you guys noticed this? It's paying less and less attention to Ahsoka. All right. So I would like to say one thing, guys, you know, I would like to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later.